I've been using KDE Plasma as my only desktop environment for more than a month now and in the process I found a bunch of cool stuff that I use to improve my productivity. So it's only right that I give them some time in the spotlight. Well, relatively speaking, it's not like I get millions of views on each of these videos, so it's a Linux-sized spotlight. Now, obviously, if you have other recommendations, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments. But for this video, from productivity apps to various sort of hidden settings and tricks to widgets, there's a lot to unpack here, including this segue to our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Collabora Online. Collabora Online is an open source, private online office suite based on LibreOffice. It supports all the features you would expect from an online office suite, like real-time collaboration, file syncing and sharing with any solution you prefer. It supports all the major document formats and it covers word processing, spreadsheets, presentations and diagrams. It integrates with various digital workspaces like Nextcloud, OwnCloud and a lot more. And it is very easy to plug everything together so you can access Collabora online from your existing environment. The suite works on any desktop web browser but also on mobile. It has apps for iOS, for Android and for Windows, macOS and Linux. And you can try it for free using Collabora Online Development Edition either with an online demo or by self-hosting it easily. Of course, Collabora also has partners that provide access to it out of the box with a complete online workspace. And Collabora offers commercial support if you need it for your organization. And since it's fully open source, you can always contribute code to help improve it. So whether you need an online office suite for your personal needs, for a small company or a big organization, Collabora has solutions for everyone. You can check them out using the link in the description below. Okay, so let's start with a few little useful tricks that you can use to improve your productivity in KDE Plasma. Now, personally, I use the Wayland session of Plasma and mostly Flatpak apps, which means that sometimes the taskbar won't correctly associate the running app with its shortcut. For example, here GIMP, but I also had the problem with DaVinci Resolve or QO Notes. Some of them even just display the Wayland icon and not the apps icon. It is a nitpick, but it is not tidy. And I like my stuff tidy, except for my cable management under my desk. But I will not show you that because I'm ashamed of it. So to fix the issue, there's a simple solution. You open the app, you right click its title bar and you select more actions, then configure special application settings. Here you can add a new property and search for desktop. And you can then add the desktop file name property. In the text field, you can just type the name of the .desktop file the app uses to run. If you don't know what it is, you can just open your app launcher, find the app you have a problem with, right click it and select edit application. In the point two field of the little preferences window, you just grab the name of the file without the .desktop and you paste that in the desktop file name property and you're done. Close the window, relaunch it, and it should now correctly be linked with your task manager. Yes, app developers should ensure that the .desktop files and their applications are correctly linked, but for those who don't, at least you can fix it. The second trick I use is to open KRunner by pressing just the super key. I don't use a launcher, I just start apps with the taskbar or using KRunner. So to use the super key only, you can type this command in a terminal. And to apply it immediately, you can type this one as well. Now, if you want to use the super key for anything else than KRunner, you can also get the full list of the things you can trigger with this command. And then you can run this other command, replacing the last part with the name of the thing you want to trigger that you obtained by running the previous command line. So for example, you could set the overview effect to open by pressing just the super key, just like a GNOME experience. That's Heresy. Oh, and also all the commands I displayed are in the description of the video, obviously. Now yet another trick is for windows that do not have a title bar. I ran into this problem with DaVinci Resolve, for example. You can force KWIN to add a title bar by going to the settings, then window rules and creating a new rule. You can click the detect window properties button 
and click the app that doesn't have a title bar for now. So you can get the property you want to base your rule on for that window, like the title of the window or the window class. Then you can click add property and select no title bar and frame. You select force in the drop down and click no. Close the app and reopen it and voila, you have a title bar. There are plenty of other things you can do with this, like changing the color scheme of the title bar for a specific app, make a window impossible to close, or always on top, or not use compositing. It is very powerful stuff to customize how you use every single app and how it will appear and how you interact with it on your desktop. Another cool trick I use all the time. By default, if you hold the super key or the Windows key on most keyboards and you just hold the right click mouse button, you can drag from anywhere in a window to resize it from the closest edge or corner without aiming for the exact window border. You can also change this to use the middle mouse button instead of the right click since that's how it works in GNOME and that's how I'm used to do it. You can also use the mouse wheel to increase or reduce a window's opacity if you want, which is pretty cool. The resize thing I just cannot live without anymore. I learned about it when using GNOME and it's so much easier than just aiming for a one pixel window border. And the reducing opacity trick for inactive windows or when you just scroll over one is just super handy if you're lazy like me and you want to peek at your desktop without actually having to go click a specific button for that. Now you could also just go to desktop effects and enable translucency and configure it to have all your inactive windows be semi-transparent. Or you can also apply that to menus, dialogues, whatever you want. Something I recently discovered as well is the ability to zoom in the desktop itself using the super key plus the equal key or the super and the minus key to zoom out. You can pan around the desktop by just moving the mouse. It is pretty handy at times. Now this other one you can mark as Gnome user discovers a real desktop. And that's the clipboard manager. While it is not as visually appealing as Pano, which is an excellent Gnome extension, KDE has a native clipboard manager that you can open with super plus V and it will show all the text you previously copied, letting you copy it again by just clicking it. Okay, one last trick. I said I don't use a launcher, but I sort of lied. Sometimes I use this menu. I just middle click on my desktop and I get a full application launcher. Useful when I forgot the name of an app and I don't know what to type in KRunner. Now, how did I get this? You just right click on the desktop, select configure desktop and wallpaper and go to mouse actions. Here in middle click, select application launcher in the drop down and hit apply and you're done. Unless you actually use desktop icons and you need to use middle click to paste stuff in there, in which case you are a monster, then this should be a very handy trick. And okay, okay, one final trick. When you select some text in an app, you can just create a small sticky note on your desktop by dragging that text to your desktop. And boom, you get a small reminder or a little list of stuff you like, and it works with links as well. Okay, now onto an application for KD. The first one I started using when I moved to KD and that I completely fell in love with, and that's QO Notes. The name is terrible and the default interface is super busy, but once you get to grips with it, it's actually a very cool note-taking app. As with most KDE apps, it is very customizable. You can change all the buttons in all the toolbars, you can show or hide certain panels, you can change the colors in the editor, you can have a live preview of your markdown notes, and you even have community plugins you can add to enhance the app. It also works with Nextcloud and OwnCloud to sync your notes with their Notes app, and you can even install a Nextcloud app for the QO Notes API. So the desktop version can access Notes versions and history as well. Personally, I just use the app to create markdown files that are stored in my Nextcloud Notes folder, which then just gets synced with the desktop client of Nextcloud. I tuned the interface to only display what I need, so the folder list, the notes list, the editor, and the very basic toolbars I need. I also decided not to use the built-in dark mode, which makes everything orange and weird, and I added the note stats script to have a live count of the number of characters in my notes. So yeah, it's the opposite of the KDE mantra. It's not simple by default, powerful when you need it. It's more like very powerful by default, but simple if you need that. 
Now let's make a detour towards plasma widgets. The default selection is handy enough. I personally added the places widget to my taskbar, so I get quick shortcuts to all my favorite folders, and I added a keyboard shortcut to activate it, since you can do that with virtually all plasma widgets. The sticky notes widget is also pretty cool, as are all the system monitors you can add for any part of your system. But the really cool thing is the community repos of widgets. Since I'm not a native English speaker, sometimes I need to look up the translation of a word. And there's a widget for that, called Translator. It can use Google Translate or other engines, and it supports a lot of languages. I added it to my taskbar with a keyboard shortcut to activate it as well. So I have no excuse for using the wrong word in a sentence now. Feel free to point out all my mistakes in the comments. I also use the server status widget, which lets me get a bird's eye view of my two instances, Nextcloud and my podcast. It just checks for an HTTP 200 code to see if the page is available, so I know at all times if something is wrong with anything I need to work. You can also just ping any URL or even try and run a command periodically. I also added the day and night switcher widget so I can switch from a light theme to a dark theme in just one click. This is not something KDE provides by default unless you open the settings. You also can't really do it dynamically depending on the time of day. There's the dynamic theme switcher widget for that, but it was a bit clunky. And finally, another interesting one I use is the KDE Connect device widget. It lets you simply drag and drop files or links to your device paired with KDE Connect so you don't have to open the KDE Connect app itself to send files to your phone. Speaking of which, let's talk about KDE Connect. This is a gem for KDE, but it also works in GNOME with the GS Connect extension. It basically lets you share files, links, or your clipboard between your computer and your phone, sort of like AirDrop and some features of continuity on Apple devices. But it also does a lot more. It's pre-installed on KDE and you'll need to install the mobile app for iOS or Android. The Android version does support more features like notification sync, replying to text messages from your desktop, and keeping the connection alive even when the app is closed on the phone. So it's much, much better on Android than on iOS. But it's still super neat to send a file from your phone to your PC or vice versa. You can also use your phone as a touchpad for your PC, you can control slideshows from your phone, you can send commands, control media playback, and more. It is a truly amazing application. You will probably need to open a port in the firewall of your distro. See the KDE Connect help for that. Uh, I had to run a console command on my new computer to open that port and make it work. But once it's done, it's just fantastic. Super well integrated with the system as well. For example, in Dolphin, you can just right click a file and select send via KDE Connect and it's gonna send the file to your phone immediately. Now, I also cannot stop this video without mentioning a few cool tricks for the default KDE apps. For example, to stamp a PDF, for example, with a handwritten signature that you just want to paste onto a document, you can use Ocular, the default PDF reader for KDE. You just click the stamp button in the toolbar, then configure annotations. Here you can add a new stamp by selecting stamp in the dropdown. Then click the little file button next to the stamp symbol field and select the image you want to use. Click OK, then apply, and you will now be able to just click the stamp you want, drag the area where you want it to also select its size, and boom, your PDF is stamped or signed or whatever else. You can even move the stamp afterwards. In Dolphin, the file manager, you can just drag and drop text or images from any other app to save them in the current directory. You don't need to right click and create a new text file or copy and paste, you can just drag and drop. You can also save images to a different format by copying them from your web browser, then right clicking in Dolphin and selecting paste clipboard contents. You'll be able to select between different formats and the image will be converted automatically for you. This has saved me a lot of time, especially when just copying pictures for the news videos that are in formats that DaVinci Resolve doesn't support, like AVIF or WebP. You can also save a search if you need to use it often. You click the search button, you set all the filters and parameters you want, and you can then click the little save icon next to the search field. It will add an entry in the favorites bar so you can always go back to it. You can also access your file browsing history by holding the left click on the previous or next button to see a list of all directories you visited. Finally, the system monitor is entirely customizable. 
You can edit pages to add or remove widgets and show exactly what you want. And you can even create pages that will appear in the sidebar when you can choose to monitor whatever you need. It's super powerful and it looks really good too. Of course, that's just all the stuff I use. This doesn't even begin to scratch the desktop rising itch with all the custom app launchers, panels and widgets and themes you can use for that. My setup is relatively simple, but you can make something either way more complex or way more toned down. And in terms of apps, I still need to take a deeper look at what's available. But what I found is that the default apps have so many features that I don't need as many small utilities and tools to manage my day-to-day -day tasks. The defaults have everything I need. So let me know if you want me to cover more KDE applications, tools, tips, tricks, or widgets. And if you have certain things that you just cannot live without in KDE, let me know down there in the comments as well. And in the meantime, I'll let you know about our sponsor. If you're a Linux user and you need to change computers, you should probably start looking at devices that ship with Linux pre-installed instead of devices that ship with Windows. And one such place is Tuxedo, our sponsor. They make laptops and desktops that ship with Linux pre-installed. All the hardware and the components have been picked specifically for its compatibility with Linux. And if there were some problems to fix, they actually submit patches upstream to fix the hardware compatibility for everyone, not just for them. So they actively contribute to the development of Linux. They have a wide range of devices from laptops to NUCs to desktops, all the power levels, all the price points you might want. So there's something for everyone in there. All the devices I use daily right now, my SteamOS console and my laptop, that's also my editing station, come from Tuxedo. And I'm super happy with these devices. So if you need a new computer, you want to run Linux on it, and you want to support Linux's development, and also you want something that you can open, repair, and upgrade, because you can do that with Tuxedo laptops, then click the link in the description below and get yourself a device from Tuxedo. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't, you can always click the dislike button and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoy the channel and you want to support it, I left plenty of links in the description of the video to do just that. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.